The most ancient sites to be found here upon our planet were often created using enormous, erosion-resistant megalithic stones. This use of enormous stone being the reason why many of these structures have indeed survived the eons. And, although the actual methods used to move such stones has been lost to history, their existence, and indeed their placement, remains a testament to our lost ancestors' past capabilities. According to modern science, or more specifically, the known laws of physics, many of these stone blocks defy understanding. And although little is known regarding the true builders of such sites, places such as Puma Punku still possesses many megalithic blocks, which display the extraordinarily advanced, astonishing feats of block building and precision carving, which we believe were left by a people who flourished an incredibly long time ago. Enormous, precision carved, precisely placed and andesite blocks still litter the site. Their existence is undeniable, yet highly controversial. Therefore, predictably, many of these sites are either quietly investigated or simply ignored, successfully concealing unexplained feats of past engineering. Some of the most visited sites on Earth contain megalith blocks walked past or over without a second thought every day. These stones, however, hold the secret to unraveling the currently attested historical inaccuracies, for they do indeed exist, cannot be shifted, and fly in the face of the incomplete history academics are attempting to teach as fact. These same individuals simply fall silent when asked to explain how their currently attested builders of said sites, be it Roman, Inca, Mayan, Egyptian, etc., actually built such structures using such enormous blocks. Additionally, regardless of these said individuals' apparent qualification to speak on such matters, when one presents any compelling evidence, such as erosion patterns, machine tool marks, highly advanced building techniques, be it anything solid which indicates a far more superior, far older civilization as the true constructors, their lack of true knowledge regarding their apparent specialist subjects always becomes apparent. Additionally, these selected, submissive, often subsequently authoritatively placed individuals have never had the experience to explore such controversial evidence or indeed, the indicative possibilities attached thereof. This means that, although their knowledge of permitted history is substantial, their overall knowledge regarding the past, and indeed, its possible past inhabitants, will always be severely limited. Yet, fortunately, although it may sometimes feel like an eternal battle, in the end, the truth is always found. We recently covered the astonishing precision-cut ancient ruins which can be found at Puma Punku within Bolivia, once an enormous city complex which still possesses some incredible features. One of the more controversial of these still surviving attractions is undoubtedly the Wall of Humanity. During the 1960s, archaeologists employed by the Bolivian government excavated a temple at Tiahuanaco. Within the walls of the courtyard, hundreds of stone heads were discovered, all with a diverse range of features masterfully built into the architecture. A once perfectly constructed wall, adorned with a variety of different faces, each now believed by a number of independent researchers to represent the different tribes and civilizations which could be found upon our planet at the time. If proven true, it is clearly a controversial reality for academia to explain. How can a wall, supposedly built by the Incas, display faces from all corners of the world, built by people who never traveled intercontinentally? Or does the wall of humanity further support the premise of a world-going advanced civilization actually having once built such sites? Furthermore, and perhaps the most intriguing detail surrounding this ancient artifact, is the addition of two heads made of a noticeably different material that, instead of displaying a possible lost tribe, 
appears to actually represent what many would now identify as grey aliens. The question is, if the Wall of Humanity does indeed represent the different tribes which could be found all over the world at the time of its creation, then who, or indeed what, do these two faces represent? Are the ancient alien theories true? Did an extraterrestrial race not only once visit our planet, but actually called it home? Clearly, an astonishing ancient artifact, which demands more alternative research. In our last video, we explored the work of the first pioneering antiquarians of the modern age. We discussed how archaeologists Arthur Poznanski and Neil Steed, along with many other astute individual researchers, unraveled a possible key to unlocking the true purpose and indeed historical significance of the site. They concluded that the site, due to academia's reluctance to tag any ancient ruin with a date of more than 4,000 years, is the oldest ruin on Earth. The archaeologists discovered an alignment with the solstices and spring equinox, which only occurred around 17,000 years ago. However, there are many other intriguing areas of interest yet to be fully understood. Along with the volumes of photographic documentations of precise measurements, independent researchers also discovered that the site's gray stonework also possesses a curious magnetic property. The question is, if these ancient people knew of this interesting characteristic, what was the purpose of using said stone? Was the stone slowly magnetized by a technology once present at the site, now lost to history? Along with the gray stone, however, the site also contains an equal amount of red sandstone, which was used to build the site, yet this red stone does not share the enigmatic magnetism of its gray counterpart. Perhaps the sandstone is somehow immune to what was responsible. Perhaps this is why the Great Pyramids were built from sandstone, to avoid the masonry taking on this magnetic charge. Perhaps, but I digress. Puma Punku is what we like to call a smoking gun, a site which clearly displays masonry skills of its ancient constructor, precision-cut stone masonry, which today could only be achieved with the use of advanced stone-cutting machinery. Shrouded in mystery, the archaeological side of Puma Punku is one of the biggest headaches for mainstream archaeology to explain. So how would an ancient culture, one which was far less capable than modern man, cut, shape, and transport from many miles away, carvings out of some of the world's toughest stone accomplished with such incredible precision. A group able to transport blocks of stone, sometimes weighing far more than 50 tons to the site, effortlessly placing them in position, often using a placement technique indicative of polygonal methodology. Interestingly, after investigating possible causes for this characteristic, it was realized that the building material was not granite, as it had long been assumed, but was in fact andesite. Andesite is the most iron-rich volcanic material we are aware of. It can contain around 15% iron oxide and can have up to 4% magnetite. Thus, the stone, it seems, could have already been displaying magnetic characteristics when placed where it now lay. Yet the question still persists. Why did this stone get selected as the building material for the temple? It was built by a civilization that brought the stone from many miles away, so the suggestion that it was the only stone available would not be a logical conclusion. It was chosen by a group who were seemingly meticulous in their application. So it is quite possible that the magnetic characteristic was somehow utilized by the builders. Thankfully. It is only a matter of time before Puma Punku's secrets are fully understood, and we finally discover who built it. It is a place we find highly compelling. <laughs>